Welcome back to Protein Metabolism. All right, my name is Kevin Tokoff on Catalyst University. In this video, we're going to talk about a protein complex called mTOR. And whenever you get into the study of protein synthesis, um, and especially in the area of exercise physiology, which is very interesting to me, mTOR is very important for stimulating protein synthesis. Now, in the field of kinesiology in particular, um, you mostly talk about, well, what would maximally activate mTOR? Because in general, when you're looking at exercise science, a lot of people are looking at building muscle, and muscle is made of protein, so you have to have high levels of protein synthesis. What allows us to maximize that, et cetera, et cetera. So let's talk about the protein mTOR and just generally what it does, and then we'll go into more detail on the biosignaling and how it works. All right, mTOR is an abbreviation, and there's two ways to abbreviate it. It either stands for mechanistic target of rapamycin or mammalian target of rapamycin. It's either mechanistic or mammalian. Um, they're both valid terms. But we mostly just abbreviate as mTOR because no one wants to say this every time they're talking about it. All right. Now, in general, what mTOR is, is it's a complex. And there's some other proteins that are involved in uh, complexing with it. And they ultimately pro pro promote many functions with, uh, within cells and so on and so forth. All right. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is the effects, which are down here. All right. Now, in this figure, this is very important, if you see an arrow with a head on it like this, and that's a good example, that's an arrow that means stimulates. If it's an arrow that kind of ends in this line, that means inhibits. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at this picture. Now, mTOR, mTOR, M think of muscle. All right, we want to build muscle, and it's used for other things also, but in general, the way I want you to think about mTOR is it's used for things that promote muscle growth um, or cell growth in general, all right? If you can think of things that would, that would tend to go along with that, then it probably is stimulated by mTOR. All right, so let's start with mRNA translation because all of these over here are going to be, of course, stimulating. So why would you want to, if, if you're trying to build muscle, why would you want to stimulate MR, mRNA translation? Well, translation literally is the fancy term for protein synthesis. It's when you take the mRNA genetic code and translate it into a sequence of amino acids. That's done by the ribosome, of course. All right. So mRNA translation stimulated by mTOR because that we can have mRNA for things like actin, myosin, proteins in muscle. So we want to stimulate mRNA translation, all right? And of course, that's done by the ribosome, which leads to increased protein, right? Okay. It also stimulates aerobic glycolysis, okay? Why do we want to stimulate aerobic glycolysis? Well, anaerobic glycolysis only uses glycolysis, and we get a measly 2 ATP per glucose because all we're doing is glycolysis. Aerobic glycolysis stimulates more the Krebs cycle, along with glycolysis and oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. Remember that aerobic glycolysis leads to a massive amount of ATP produced, somewhere on the order of 34 or 36 per glucose, versus 2 if it was anaerobic. So of course, if we want to stimulate aerobic glycolysis, it's for the goal of making a lot more ATP. And why is that ATP necessary? Go back to a previous video on the mechanism of protein synthesis, and you'll see that in order to use the ribosome for protein synthesis, you have to consume ATP. And that's actually done in the enzyme aminoacyl tRNA synthetase. It consumes ATP to activate amino acids for protein synthesis. So of course, we want a ton of ATP, right? Now, we're also talking about cell growth, right? If we're going to grow cells, if we're going to divide cells through mitosis, Cells have to have a membrane. So mTOR will also stimulate de novo lipid synthesis. So synthesis of fatty acids for phospholipids. We need to make phospholipids if we're making cells because they have to have membranes. We need to synthesize cholesterol. That goes in membranes. Cholesterol is also a lipid. And that's also, we're able to synthesize that de novo in humans. Okay, so if we need to, if we need to do mitosis, cell growth, cell division, of course we need lipids. Also, what's also important is biosynthesis of nucleotides and amino acids. Particularly for nucleotides, there's a molecule that's very, very important, NADPH. 
NADPH is used to reduce molecules, um, basically a reduction, okay, in terms of redox chemistry. NADPH is very important for biosynthesis of both amino acids and nucleotides. So what mTOR will do is it will stimulate the pentose phosphate pathway. Now what is the pentose phosphate pathway? Just a review. The pentose phosphate pathway synthesizes two main things. Number one, NADPH, and I've already mentioned why that's important. It also synthesizes ribose, particularly ribose 5-phosphate. Why is ribose important? Because ribose is used to make nucleotides. Right, if you look at DNA, which is needed, obviously, if you're going to replicate DNA to divide a cell, it's needed for mRNA synthesis because ribose is part of mRNA, etc., etc., you have to have ribose to, to do gene expression, to replicate DNA to make more DNA for another cell. That's, of course, deoxyribose, but it's the same concept. You have to have ribose to make mRNA to get a protein expressed. So the pentose phosphate pathway accomplishes both of those. It makes NADPH and ribose which we used to make nucleic acids, and de novo nucleotide synthesis. Because if we're going to be dividing and growing, we need more nucleotides. That's how we grow. So hopefully it makes sense that all five of these things would be stimulated. Now if our goal is growth and, you know, division, then it would also make sense that autophagy would be inhibited. What is autophagy? Autophagy is basically when a cell decides to consume its own uh, constituent parts. So it's going to start degrading its own internal environment. Well, if your goal is growth, then of course this would be inhibited. So, you know, you'd want to inhibit that. Okay? Now, in terms of the stimuli, they're going to cause all this to happen. Well, let's look at the ones that in inhibit first. Stress. You've ever heard the concept that you can't build muscle very well while you're stressed? People often lose weight while they're stressed. That's because stress inhibits mTOR, okay? And I mean stress in every sense of the word, okay? Tumor suppressors. Well, a tumor, although I would argue obviously the tumors are not good, a tumor suppressor in general is a molecule, usually a transcription factor, that is going to inhibit protein synthesis overall. So it would make sense that a tumor suppressor would inhibit mTOR because mTOR stimulates protein synthesis. So indirectly, tumor suppressors can inhibit protein synthesis. Now, in terms of all this other stuff, all right, amino acids. Well, obviously, amino acids are going to stimulate protein synthesis, and it's not all the amino acids equally. There's actually some in particular that we'll look at in another video, particularly essential amino acids, and out of those, particularly the branched-chain amino acids, isoleucine, valine, and leucine, and out of those three, it's especially leucine. Always think leucine when you think of activating the mTOR complex. In fact, that's why when you take a protein supplement after, or for a, a post-workout, it often says on there, loaded with BCAAs. BCAA stands for branch chain amino acid. That's because leucine in particular, but also the other two BCAAs, stimulate mTOR. Okay? Oxygen. Oxygen is needed for aerobic glycolysis. Hopefully that makes sense. High levels of ATP stimulate mTOR. Why is that? Because protein synthesis requires ATP. And I mentioned that it, it does that in the form of amino acyl tRNA synthetase. And they're also, obviously, to build amino acids, you need a lot of ATP also. And that's for de novo amino acid synthesis. Glucose stimulates mTOR. All right? It's a well-known thing that, yes, you have to have a lot of amino acids and protein in the diet to build muscle, but it's been shown that glucose also increases mTOR activity above even just simple uh, protein intake. Okay? And so glucose is going to stimulate that because you also have to catabolize the glucose. And the best way to do that is aerobic glycolysis. Now, insulin. Insulin also stimulates mTOR. The reason that does is because insulin is all about cell growth, right? Insulin is about cell growth, cell division, so it would make sense that it would activate mTOR. Cytokines are, are signaling molecules that usually result in cell growth and differentiation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those mostly have to do with the immune system, but the immune system will also um, be upregulated when mTOR is active, okay? And in terms of infectious agents, well, if you're infected, you need more protein synthesis to make more immune cells to fight the infection. So hopefully that makes sense. So stimulate protein synthesis, so stimulate mTOR. Oncogenes. 
Oncogenes are genes, and sometimes sometimes oncogenes refers to the protein product, because genes are not proteins, right? But sometimes we use this to talk about the proteins. An oncogene is a gene that is that when it's transcribed and then translated, the protein is cancerous. Okay, onco is the prefix that means cancer. If you've heard of an oncologist, that's a physician or doctor that treats cancer. So oncogenes, remember, cancer promotes cell growth, but it's usually uncontrolled. Now, I would obviously argue that oncogenes are not good to have in your body. You want to not be oncogenic, but oncogenes will promote mTOR, and that's one of the ways that you have cancer cell growth, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so this is really just a summary of mTOR, what its effects are downstream, and then also what stimulates mTOR. And the main thing to think about is rationalize why it is this way. Why is it this way? So rationalize it. That's the best way to study this stuff. mTOR is going to stimulate anything that's for cell growth, differentiation, division, but it's going to inhibit anything that's about cell death, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay? So hopefully that makes sense. In the next video, we're going to go over mTOR activity post-exercise, and then we're going to go into more biosignaling with mTOR. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.